The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has uh, announced Monday Okpeolu of the All Progressive Congress as the winner of the Edo State Governorship election. The victory is not just for Monday Okpeolu, it also marks a significant comeback for the APC in Edo State. Recall that the APC lost power in Edo State in 2022 and incumbent Governor Godwin Obasaki defeated the PDP due to, or defected, I beg your pardon, to the PDP due to internal conflicts, which stemmed from a fallout with his predecessor, Adams Oshomole. While Obaseki campaigned vigorously for Igodalo of PDP, Oshomole played a crucial role in supporting Okwewulu during his campaign. As Oshomole celebrates the win, Obaseki has claimed that the electoral process was marred by impunity and reckless disregard for processes and law. My dear good people of Edo State, in the last few months, the various political parties have embarked on very rigorous campaigns to sell their respective candidates for the office of governor to the people of Edo State in an exercise which came to a climax yesterday. The attractive thing about democracy is the power it bestows on the people to choose who governs them. Therefore, when this power is blatantly seized from the people, it is not just a tragedy, but a travesty of democracy. Regrettably, the outcome of the September 21st governorship election appears to have daunted the spirit of many Edo people who feel powerless in the face of the brute force of the institutions that are supposed to protect them. Joining us now is Nigerian political activist who was on ground to monitor the elections and uh, will be giving us her own observations. We're talking about Aisha Yusufu. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Hello, good morning, and thank you so much for having me. All right. Uh, you're in Benin City, and uh, you follow the elections closely. The governor says that it's a travesty. He says that the will of the people has been snatched. Uh, from what you observed, did it look like that? And, you know, what are your thoughts about the elections in Edo State? Yeah, yeah, it looked like that. But uh, the thing is that uh, both the APC and the PDP partook in that travesty. And the only reason why Obasaki is coming out to talk now is because he was outbeaded and uh, outrigged. That's just, uh, the, in essence, what happened. Just to quickly talk about the fact that uh, I'm, I'm really surprised at the fact that uh, Governor Obasaki is talking about, you know, democracy and democratic principles when he, in his eight years, in, in government, in government knows what he has done. It's, it's not yet eight years, almost eight years, and government knows what he has done in terms of, you know, shredding everything about democracy. We see what he did with the state houses of assembly when he refused to swear in four of them. We see what he did with the impeachment of his deputy, you know, uh, governor. Uh, we saw what he did also by refusing to swear in three out of the eight judges that he was supposed to have sworn. But have, let's put that aside. Focusing uh, on the elections that happened, in the words of uh, Olumide Akpata, on the 21st of September 2024, it wasn't an election that happened, it was a bidding war. And this bidding war was done by both APC and PDP. We saw outright open buying of votes. We know that both the APC at the national level and the PDP at the state level have impoverished the people. They have ensured that poverty has become the portion of the people and they weaponize that poverty to be able to buy votes uh, cheaply. We saw a situation whereby uh, two of the, the both of these parties on either side of them, because like I said in one of the tweets that I did, if you take the results of some of the AP, uh, APC results, and the, uh, if you look at the result sheets from where APC is strong or where PDP is strong or something like that, you see it's almost a mirror image of each other, where you're having almost 90% of voters coming out, you're having high numbers, and then you're putting one zero whatever you know for labor and the other thing so they come they came together apc and pdp are the same party let's not mix what about it obasaki i'm sure is already picking up his probably picking up his form uh, to go back to apc and become one of that big family uh, that he is philip shaibu yesterday was just in uh, pdp now he's celebrating the fact that apc has won and so yes there was that there was also voter voter apathy a lot of people you know did not come out the turnout is abysmally low in terms of physical presence in terms of going around the polling polling unit but when you come to the paper the turnout is something else. We're seeing 90-something percent turnout in some of the 
some of the resource sheets that are out. And I give you one example. There was one I can't remember the polling unit precisely now. It said about a thousand and eight voters are registered at that polling uh, unit. And guess what? A thousand and six uh, came out to vote, and a thousand and four voted for AP. Uh, for, uh, and then two voted for PDP according to this research, this questionable research sheet, and there was nothing for uh, other the state. That's almost like ninety nine or some, almost like ninety nine percent, you know, voters to, uh, turn out. Where do we ever have that in Nigeria? Where do you ever get that happen? Especially this particular time where there's so, there was so much apathy, a lot of people didn't turn out. And one of the things I would say to the people that didn't turn out is congratulations. They used your ballot paper because whatever, if you're registered ballot paper to be sent in and they'll be used and they were able to use it to rig. I mean, so we spoke with, you know, a representative from Yaga Africa this morning, you know, and one of the things that she mentioned, you know, along with, you know, a uh, um, um, reporter on ground, was that the vote buy-in, you know, wasn't just with the two major parties. You know, they're also accusing the Labour Party of vote buy-in. You know, so is this true from what you observed that the... No, absolutely not. And why we tell you that it's not true? If we're going to engage in uh, vote buying, definitely there's no harder. We didn't have enough money to have paid people a hundred, hundred thousand at the uh, Media Apatas uh, polling unit. While he was there, and this is something he has also uh, mentioned, while he was there, the vote buying was going on. And I knew one of his, uh, one of the supporters would come to him like worried. At least let there not be shame. He was like, no, whatever, we need to see what things are. He's not going to partake in that uh, criminality. If we're going to buy a uh, vote, definitely we would have, been, we would have bought out the votes and, and show up the numbers and really have that good uh, fight that everyone was going to fight. But I thought that's not, that's not factual. Let Harry check again and see the people who partook in vote buying. And it was APC and PDP. It, it, it's there. It's some of the police have caught uh, some of their people out there that had that partook in this vote or, or on both sides. So there's no vote buying that came from Labour Party. Okay, and the, the Labour Party as well. I think it was very shocking to see the disparity between or the difference between the numbers that have been, you know, said to be the numbers for the PDP, the APC, and the Labour Party with about twenty-two thousand. Did this come as a shock? And, you know, what steps will the Labour Party be taking regarding this? Oh, so, so the thing is this. I, I love the way you put it where it says, said to have come, because that's just what it is, said to have come. This election, this Edo election, I can tell you that it's not, it's not just about, oh, a, a gubernatorial election. It's about the, the two, uh, what do you call it, the two Siamese twins that we have, you know, APC and PDP, and an idea of a third force, of another party daring to be an opposition. So as far as they're concerned, whatever that can be done to kill any notion of third, uh, third force, will be done to kill any notion of third force. If they have to come together, if they have to share the vote, okay, you're stronger, we'll take this, you take that, because they did that also with the 2023 presidential election, which came as a shock uh, to them, the way people uh, came out and, and stu stood out. So it's not about the party itself, that oh, the party they didn't have what it was supposed to have, this is the fact that there are two parties who believe that the only people who are supposed to stand for election are, are the people that they put forth, whether they are good or they are not good. And Nigerians must always remain at the point where they are choosing the lesser evil or between the devil and the Red Sea. They want Nigeria in that perpetual state so that they can continue to give the incompetence they want to give. And you are forced to go from one uh, one of them or the other, and they know they can move fluidly. They know they're literally like one party with different uh, branches. So that is what th that is for them, and that's just the way uh, uh, they see. So this, for me, I think that is for Nigerians to say, it. and this is to for every one of us to say: Do we want to continue to be slaves to these two parties? who call themselves dominant parties and have a sense of entitlement that it has to be only them? Or are we going to stand up and every one of us begin to know that politics is our business and we don't have any business staying out of it and allowing other people to continue to control what, who are the people who get to govern? Because at the end of the day, the people who got to govern are the ones who are going to make policies that are going to make or mark our, 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 our lives. And so that, that's what this is all about. It's not our Labour Party itself. There is a connivance between this to do everything it can to ensure there's no third force. 
I mean, at this point, um, would you expect, I mean, you've pointed out the irregularities. You've also said that they were out buying themselves and out rigging themselves, mm -hmm. like what you've said. Um, yeah. The Labour Party, of course, you know, watched all of this happen. Would you, ex would you be expecting the Labour Party to go to court to challenge the credibility of the elections? Well, I, that will be for the party to decide itself whether they're going to do that and for the candidate uh, to decide itself. But I think, uh, based for me, uh, for me uh, as a Nigerian citizen, I think it should worry every one of us, the, the electoral process that we have right now and what is going on. And for me, let me just add something also. Uh, to say that we saw what happened in Imo State where, you know, violence and intimidation was used and APC did the same thing. We saw what happened in Kogi State where violence and intimidation was used and APC, you know, got to put its result the way it wanted to put it. We saw the fact that resource sheets had been written. Even in this election, there were quite quite a, a number of places in Edo State where the people were caught with already resource sheets that were already filled. These are places where the incumbent were already APC. Now coming to PDP, uh, to, sorry, to uh, Edo State, the incumbent is not APC, it's PDP. So there was a grand power and the, the federal might and the state might were warring at each other. And they probably saw that, uh, uh, what do you call it now, intimidation and violence was not going to work. And then they went through the route of vote buying, massive vote buying. We have Ondo election coming up. We have Anambra election coming up. We've already seen the the, 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 the menu, uh, I should add, the, the blueprint that APC has on ground. Uh, it wants to turn itself to a one state party. And at this, at, this, at this moment, I think it's critical for every Nigeria. If we really want a nation that works for everyone, if we don't work, want our lives where it is now, right now to depreciate, for, for the bad governance to work in, security to work in, Nigerians need to stand up. Because at the end of the day, what they do is that they continue to impoverish the people. And when they impoverish the people, it makes it cheaper for them to buy, you know, the votes of the people that they want to buy. In some places, they, buy, they bought votes as low as 5,000 Naira. In 2016, they were buying votes like 10,000. How many years later, about eight years later, it was they were now buying some 5,000, 10,000. So the more the people are impoverished, the more the people are in poverty, the more they are able to, you know, weaponize that poverty and use it. Absolutely. And so here we are, where it is not one man, one vote. It is not free, fair, credible election. It is... Who are the people who are going to bring money and they have the money, the, 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 the what do you call it now, uh, the money of the people to use, to pay the people and take away the votes. And that should worry every one of us. So, uh, and I completely hear you when you talk about weaponized poverty. I think it was one of our biggest concerns because we haven't had as bad a time in our country as we're having now. And if buying uh, votes ha or vote buying has been in existence for, for years, you know, we wondered if... I mean, we're not surprised that this year wasn't an election. But I, I do think that, I mean, I heard you say that Nigerians need to stand up if they're going to be sure that we're not going to go into uh, worse levels of poverty. But the question is, what will standing up look like? Because it would seem that protests are not allowed, and it would seem that you know, a number of Nigerians are losing faith in the electoral system. So what would the picture of standing up look like? Okay, uh, so the first thing I'll say for those who are losing faith is to say to us, <laughs> it's not going to get easier. The people who are out there to destroy Nigeria are very tenacious. And so when people say they are losing faith or they don't want to do anything, they don't want to participate in the election, everything, I say to them, you already participated. Even when you, you are either participating actively or you're participating passively. So that's the mindset that we need to have. And right now, with the kind of medical discovery that I have, people are going to be here in Nigeria for the next 50 years, 60 years. Some people are going to live for the next 60 years. And it's going to keep worsening if we don't do the needful. So what does Stand It Up look like? Standing up means we begin to call our representatives at the National Assembly to say there needs to be a new elect uh, electoral, uh, there needs to be amendment, there needs to be a situation whereby there are stringent rules, uh, things that are put there. It doesn't mean that the politicians that are used to this thing, the normal uh, class, the political class that we have, they will find their way of going around it. But before they find their way, it goes through. So you, 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 you leave up a lot of things. Uh, it, Another thing, uh, standing up would mean that INEC, uh, the, whoever it is that heads INEC, the INEC chairman or chairwoman or whatever it is, should not be someone that, that is appointed 
by in, in, in Nigerian president. We must get a situation whereby the independence that is in INEC should not only be the I that is in their name, that they are absolutely and truly independent. We must have a situation whereby Nigerians are standing up and saying to their lawmakers, uh, makers, finding a way that indeed people who are put in to, to be INEC commissioners are not card carrying members. Of, of any political party or supporters of any political party. There yeah, must be we, people who are not partisan who are going to be unbiased. Yeah, we did you get know, to see that. Would... Yeah, we, we did get to see, you know, I mean, there were those allegations, you know, of uh, the REC, Mr. Onoha, being cousins with uh, Nyesom Wike. And of course, you know, one of the national commissioners were Edo State also being an APC member, uh, allegedly. But before we go, I want you to quickly just speak on Edo North. You are from Edo North, I believe. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, where it seemed to have given the APC its largest vote in, you know, numbers. Um, what are your quick reactions to that? You know, is that mostly because of the influence of Adam Sushomali as a former governor? Or is there any other reason Edo North, you know, voted in mass for the APC? So in the case of uh, Edo North, something went on. First of all, I'm ashamed of the fact that there was massive, you know, vote buying. People were selling uh, their vote. And then there is that influence of Adam Sosomoli, where he has kept the people, you know, uh, sort of like oppressed and continues to, to use that uh, power, uh, that undue influence negatively. The other thing also is the fact that our past governor, our past uh, deputy, the, form, the deputy governor, I think the, the court have restored him now, Philip Shaibu, is from Edo North. And PDP knowing fully well that. The Edo North was not even on the ticket, on the ticket of the on PDP and APC, on their ticket. He did everything. He impeached him in such a manner that, that you know, democratic principles were not adhered to. And so, first of all, this is someone, you don't have a donut in, in, in the, on the ticket. You decided that you were going to impeach the person that they had there. Of course, there was going to be anger. Then the issue of uh, the PDP uh, head also, uh, from the Edo, I don't know, there were issues. The PDP had been divided, and it was so much easier for votes to be for people to be disillusioned and not even come out. And then the ones that came out, their votes were bought. But as an I do not person, I will tell you, I am absolutely ashamed that my people decided that 5,000, 10,000 was more than you know what their their lives will do. Like our people will say, Oh, no, turn on that. Oh, no, 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 turn on that. God is like a mile here, Madame. Yeah. <laughs> I like <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Please can you help us translate that before you go. <laughs> well, I said it's it's like where they said that their mouth was itching them, scratching them, and because of that, they decided to sell their future for five thousand, ten thousand. We will see how it goes. All right. That's like what I said. I show you super. Thank you very much for joining us and for speaking with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me.